Y'all yeah. know. That's my mama. <laughs> That's my mama, y'all. Yeah. What she gonna say? You know, you never know what she gonna say. <laughs> That's my mama. Who? You go ahead and tell her. What she gonna say? my mama, baby. Oh, y'all yeah. know. That's my mama. <laughs> That's my mama, y'all. What's happening? What's happening? It's me, James Battle Tested Clay, and Mama P. And we're here to do Mama's Monday message. And I know y'all think, I'm like, man, they looking awfully sharp today. I mean, um, we just came from a, a funeral of a good uh, friend of the family, Miss Marilyn Olding. And so we just came from there in Troy, Ohio. And mom said she wanted to talk a little bit about family. Yes, yes. And um, when I think of family, I think of my son, Timothy. Uh, his birthday was this past this past weekend. And uh, this past week, Wednesday, and how it I, how it felt towards me and towards the family. So y'all y'all know we crazy and we silly, but at the same time, you know, like Mom said a couple weeks ago when she had to pull out her calendar, there was a time and a place for everything. So today's the time to just talk about family. Speaking of time, did you you didn't bring did you did you bring you didn't bring your calendar in, did you? I take that calendar with me, um, and I had to bring it. I got it with me, right here. What is, what is that? That that's the calendar. What is that? It's in a garbage bag. Yeah, yeah. Why is it in a garbage bag? Today is a very very rainy day, and if my calendar gets wet, then some of the letters and stuff will roll off of it. So I have to have. Hold on. It. How's the letters roll off? You know, when something gets wet, it's kind of like... I thought it smeared. I didn't know it rolled off. Well, your word is smeared, mine is rolled. <laughs> you see little bubbles of water and where it's faded out? Mm -hmm. So my word is rolled off because when I wrote it, wrote, the word rolled... <laughs> Is so close to that. <laughs> that don't make sense. It don't make sense. Wrote and rode. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you come up with that? You just came up with that right there. Just I just now came then. up with that one. Y'all know that it's good. Listen. And my son laughs at me. But I'm hoping that you all out there understand where I'm coming from. See, now... Hold, hold on. Have your paperwork ever got wet and it rolled off? The letters rolled off. <laughs> the go on. It's smeared, Mommy. It don't get... It. Never mind. Never mind. You smear stuff like when you put your hand on your windows and you see it's all clean and then you see a big old greasy hand spot. That is a smear. Mm -hmm. They smeared it on. But now when you get Windex and spray the Windex, the Windex rolls off the words that were written. And it cleans it. So I didn't say smeared because I heard of things being smeared that is just dirty. But rolled off is such a nice clean word. Have you ever seen ink roll off of the paper? When it got wet, it's just dripping and rolling down. Well, anyway, we come from two <laughs> different schools of words, but Mama P got it. And I'm hoping that you guys out there understand Mom. where I'm coming from. What, James? Can I see your uh can I see your calendar cover for a minute? Yeah, sure. No, no, no. The calendar cover. Where oh, yeah. Oh, right here? Do you need that concentration or something? 
No. It is a trash bag. Mom, see, that's why you get a regular calendar that you can put in your pocket. I don't have pockets. You got a purse? Yeah, but I'm not going to dig in the purse and try to find it. If I have this in my hand, <laughs> I know where it's at. And I'm protecting it because there's important information in here. Can I get you to learn how to do it in your cell phone? No, because when we be trying to talk to the people, and you know I'm not that good with my cell phone because you guys are always getting on me. By the time I find out where it then rolled off, I've even deleted it out. And that's exactly what rolled off means. It got deleted. Rolled off means it got deleted. Yes. That's kind of like you run to eat, but you don't want to eat and run. That's right. Okay. So, now that we got that out of the way, you, you put that, you put that back. I just want to know. If, I, but when I'm going to say this before we really get into our, our important lesson, is that I think you're really jealous of this because you're so intelligent and, and uh, people wouldn't expect you to have a calendar like this. But you the one that told me get a big calendar. So I look, look, you got yours on the wall. That's where it's supposed to be. But this ain't made like that. You got it all framed up and all pretty and everything. You don't carry yours with you everywhere you go. Because I got my cell phone. When you know how to use that cell phone. When I try to do anything in my cell phone, they even have... Okay, Mom. They have pocket calendars. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like the uh, the extra accessories and everything. It's dope. I, I want one. I'm jealous. Well, maybe I'll get you one for Christmas. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay, let's put the calendar up since it is offending you. So, so we're dealing with family. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask y'all, what is your family? And I made a couple statements to mom and I'm going to let her have it here. Um, we say family is blood. And then we have said that blood is thicker than the water. So that means what we're supposed to ride with our family members when there's other people that's, when we talk about being born in the water. Right. And then now we're talking about blood. Right. But I, I want to talk about spiritual family. Okay. So there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible, Matthew 12, 46 through 50. And Jesus is talking to the crowds. And his mom and his brother are standing outside and they're trying to get his attention. And somebody interrupts Jesus and says, hey, hey, Jesus, your mom and your brother want you outside. And Jesus looked at them, pulling no punches. And he said, who is my mother and my brother? But those who follow the will of God. Amen. And he pointed at the disciples. He said, those are my brothers, my sister, and my mother. That's pretty deep. That's real, real so, deep. So, what do you want to say about family that don't talk? I lost my son. Right. Miss Marilyn passed this morning. Yes. I was with Aunt Barb this week. It's been like a family type thing all week, but there's been death involved with the family right right i lost uh, two brothers uh, if i'm right within nine months of each other and uh, a sister the blood this uh sister and brother but i love family because there's been time that my blood family hasn't always been there for me when I became saved in the spirit of God. A lot of those lonely nights and days and needing somebody to talk to, sometimes it wasn't always blood family. Right. When I got saved. We mean saved. Through the spirit of God in the what, water from the world. What, from, you're being saved from a life of the world. Okay. Of the world. Just checking. Some people don't know what saved means. He... God gave me some wonderful friends like they are my family. He'll give you a brand new family. He'll send someone to you. And that's really his spirit in that individual in that, that comes to you to be there for you. 
we are supposed to love one another as he has loved us. And it doesn't make no difference what color they are. If we say that we're reborn of the water and the spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus has no respect to person. He treats everyone the same. Even those that don't accept him for who he is, he still gives them chance after chance after chance because he is our heavenly spiritual father. Down here we have our earthly father. Right. But our spiritual father, you know, he sits high, he looks low, and he brings us together. And there's times when things happen in the blood family. Without the spiritual family, there would be times when we wouldn't be able to survive. Right. And so we basically have two families. But that spiritual family is the one that believe and trust in God. The same way you do. If you disbelieve in my brother, my sister, my uncle, my auntie, sometime when you need them, they're not there. I, 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 have a, I have a family of brothers that I go every Friday morning to, um, to do a Bible study with. And I meet with them this morning. And they all sent texts and sent messages to me about my son. And y'all know I love, love Timmy. I always talk about Timmy. Um, no one is perfect. Tim wasn't perfect. Tim was amazing, though. He was yes, an amazing he was. person. He, he <clears throat> but I wasn't always able to be there because y'all know I was incarcerated. And so even though the blood was there, and that's my blood son, I couldn't always be there for him. And there's family members now, I have kids now that I can't, I can't be there, they're all over the world. Um, so it's, sometimes it just hurts because you want to be there for him, you want to have a relationship with your family members, but maybe they don't want to have a relationship with you. That's right, I, uh, when we was at the uh, Miss Marilyn Odin's uh, funeral, I heard someone that got up and said a few short words about her that it really made me feel good about um, people being there for you. And Sister Marilyn, she would run and try to get everybody that she knew to come to the spiritual father, not the ones in the world. Because sometimes children ask, well, where's my dad? And right. who is my dad? Right. Well, how come I never seen him? Right. You think I'm ever going to get a chance to see him? Well, some of those questions cannot be answered. So, so how how do we <clears throat> reconcile with those that are still living? You know, the hardest thing for me to even imagine is for one of my siblings, blood siblings, blood family members, to pass, and I don't get that thing right. You know, we may not get a chance to reconcile. How do we, to the ones that are living, and we're probably not speaking, how do we reconcile from your perspective? How do we go to that person and reconcile? I believe with the spirit personally talking about you, battle tested in many ways try, try it in the fire, the rain, uh, alone. Uh, I believe that if we know God is our answer, but if anybody has the answer for that, I really believe that you have it because you've been through so many battles, being tested in so many ways, and you're not being done with yet. God still is going to allow, you hear me say, allow the enemy to come and test you because he believes in you but the more you know the more God is expecting out of you right if right. you know a little he is expecting a little but I believe that you have the answers because you've been there and I know that each individual is different but I feel good that 
I love to hug people. You know how the pandemic is kind of stopping that, but I hug on them anyway. And I have a lot of people that love me. I believe in their heart they really do love me. And I'm not talking about my children. I'm talking about God's spiritual children. Right. We want to see all of our children in the church. We want to see all of our friends in the church. But when somebody walks up to you and you're you're having a down day, or maybe no one's hugged you for a week or two weeks or a month, and someone runs up to you and gives you a spiritual hug, mm -hmm. yeah. that is so wonderful. That wonderful. It's like something just goes all up in you. And some people just isolate themselves, and you don't have to be all churchy. Yes. But if you walk, go to a place where people are full of the spirit and they're full of love, they're going to feel your emptiness. They're going to feel your loneliness and they're going to want to give you, God is going to tell them to walk up and give you a hug. Amen. I, I agree with that 100%. I, I, I had, a, we had a family meeting FaceTime and some of us were on there the night, uh, Tim, the evening of Tim's birthday. And I was frustrated and I was going through all type of emotions and the next generation, my younger generation, Josh and Ariva and, and Courtney, they're further down the road in building family and relationships than my siblings were. Right, right. And they're even were farther along than probably your yep. siblings were. Yes. And you're probably farther along than your parents were. Yes. In each generation, we want to get better. We want to teach our children. We want to have the blood, water, and the spirit yes. like yes. this between one another. Right. I want my children to fill my spirit, to let my blood flow through their veins, and we can share a glass of water. That's right. And that's share our life together. And that's, you know, I want that for everybody, and I didn't before. Everybody wants to be their strong individual, and everybody wants to be stuff that's going to be my way, or forget everybody. That's right. I don't want to be a part of this. You ain't right. You this, that, and the other. Everybody wants to be seen and heard. But what are you wanting to be seen and heard about? If it's not about Jesus and the, our Heavenly Father, what is so important that you want to be the one that I'm, I'm going to do it this way, but if you're going to do it my way, then I'm out of here. But one of the <laughs> things that I've learned through being uh, in the Lord and being in the Spirit the spirit is full of love and compassion. And maybe your family members or your friends haven't experienced that love. Right. Maybe they don't even know what love means right. because they've never been loved. That's going to be a good topic. We can talk about we, love next time. We, we're going to come back with love maybe next week. But we want to know right now in your life, do you have another family other than your blood family? Have you asked yourself that question? Who really loves me? It ain't about the money they give you. It ain't about picking you up to give you a ride. It's about the spirit and the compassion that's in you that you know. I know for a fact, 100, 200%, if I needed my son, not because we're blood, not that I'm just his mother, but the spirit that this young man has, even before he was incarcerated, he takes his shoes off of his feet and give to someone. He gives somebody some place to lay their head. He would uh, take them where they needed to go. That's love. That's caring. That's compassion. That's the spirit of God. And you ain't got to give me nothing back because I feel good right. if I can hug you and I made you feel a little bit better That's that today. unconditional love. And you know, when we talk about Jesus, Jesus' message was love. A lot of people get into a lot of other things and a lot of people are turned off by Jesus just by the name because those who have represented him have represented him falsely. Yes, yes. They don't really know him. And if you understand... Christ and you understand his walk he loved everybody and so I just you know we're, we're getting close to it we got to wrap it up but I love my family um, 
I took that for granted before I went to prison. Not really took it for granted, but I didn't really focus in on my, I was focused on my career and trying to be this. And if you're overly more concerned about your career than, than those, those loved ones around you, especially if you're a parent, you might want to read. I want to say this while James is saying that. To me, one of his thoughts was, like I said, he helped a lot of people. But he's one of the ones to me that forgot he did have a blood family. Because mm -hmm. he was so busy helping the outside people that he forgot to look in on his natural blood family. So we got to get those together. And, and you can't go two and three years without speaking to your brother or your sister, your mom or your dad, because they made you a little bit angry. And you say, I'll never, ever speak to them again. A little bit angry. You know, you know when my mom made me a little bit angry? When she made me them Sloppy Joe sandwiches. Knowing them sandwiches was too big <laughs> for this little bitty kid. And she put all that man we on there and it just run out. It was her fault. Oh, no. It, it was your fault. But do you know how to hold Why it? Why did you make me a manly sandwich if you knew it was going to fall all over a my shirt? A manly sandwich is for you to eat and be filled up so you can become a man. Man witch. But I was a child witch. Yeah, I know you were. <laughs> <laughs> I got it with a word. Oh, my I got, God. I was a child witch, so I should have had a child witch sandwich, well, not a man I witch was, sandwich. I thought I was really doing something that... I was able to give you a big meaty sandwich because we didn't always have everything that we needed. It wasn't a sloppy Joe sandwich, it was a sloppy James sandwich. And then, but he was able to drink that Kool-Aid. Come on, Ma, here we go. So I want to show y'all this. We all this is what I'm talking about me. I want to celebrate my family. That's four generations. That's a, that picture's kind of old. It's me, mom, Andrea, my firstborn, and her firstborn, Malachi. She about to give me another grandchild here any day, any day. And we already got have her, her name. Her name is Phoenix Rain. Dre, are we praying for you? We, hey, we're man. loving you. That's my blood grandchild. Your blood great, great granddaughter daughter. coming into the world. So hopefully Phoenix Rain, we speaking this on your life, that your water, your blood, and your spirit. spirit will be one with this family. If you ever want to ask us a question, you can call James Battle Tested Clay. <laughs> Don't call you because if you call mom, she ain't gonna answer. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm talking about? <laughs> Now, she, would y'all call this love? She gonna, would y'all call gonna this, Would y'all call this love? All right, y'all. We got to go. We'll see you next time, and we will finish up there. This is Mama P. <laughs> the, the battle test is not about winning or losing. It's about learning and growing from well, it. Well, I'd be glad when you learn something. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you just go get a Sammy, a, 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 a child witch? By the way, I do work to McDonald's because I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> I'm not allowed to eat McDonald's anymore. I got to get rid of some of this. I didn't so. say about you. I said me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Oh,